Good morning. I am ready to go into Deuteronomy chapter 23. And Father, we thank you right now for your word. Very clear. Very, very, very clear. I have never seen anything in the word of God in all of my entire life as I have written, as you have written and given to us in chapter 23. May I speak every word, every punctuation mark that I see, that I adhere to, that I be that I am clear as you are. Absolutely not in my opinion, just let you be you because this is very candid. And thank you that the people that were here today will receive it and see God is God and you are good and everything that you said in this word according to Deuteronomy 23, as all others was in my best interest. Father, I thank you right now that you have given me the right to forgive and you are forgiving me. And Lord, all the things that I presumptuously said out of my mouth helped me put a, a lock on my mouth that when I make a vow or I say something, I live up to what I'm saying, knowing that I don't want to irritate you with my voice saying things that I don't carry out. Help me, Father, to be a better manager of the things that I say and help me to think before I speak. Give me of my sins, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray, man. Good morning, Frederick. All right, Deuteronomy 23 is for uh, people that are ready to hear raw word because I'm telling you what I see in Deuteronomy 23, I've never heard any human being say and this is my first time reading it, and I studied it and studied at one chapter a day. And I give it all the attention I know to give. And I, once I get it, I sit before people who know more than I or have been here on this walk or journey before, and they confirm or uh, correct some of my thinking. And it's a beautiful thing to have instructions that you can hear somebody else um teach and it lines up with exactly what you know God's word said. That's how it's supposed to flow. When you hear the testimony of Moses, we're supposed to say what he said. And we have not done that. We have not done that. We have, we have like, like one of those writers said in the New Testament, y'all took the letters of Paul and you butchered it. We have butchered God's word when he said there was a correct way to cut it. And let's cut it and it's getting ready to be raw. I'm talking about raw and I am not apologizing. I'm not trying to. And if I sound like I'm trying to. I'm just saying wake up and let's eat some meat today. Go. This is this is for people who, who really want to see God's word heard and want to do what he said. All right. I'm going to read it and I'm going to say some things that are. Very good and very clear. All right, it starts off really strong, and let's move on to what God is saying to us. He that is wounded in the stones or had his private member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. If a man has anything, uh, is he, if he has cut off his I'm trying not to say the word. The Bible says private member. <laughs> mm, mm. If he has cut off his private member, a man, he said if he has anything wrong with his private part, he can't come in in the presence of the Lord, the congregation of the Lord. Deuteronomy 23, but let's see the same God that loves us, that lets us know you can't come in here like that. All right, let's talk about that for a minute before we move on, because there are a lot of interesting things that we got to see what the word said. Why is it that this man can't come in? Because number one, the children of Israel had to have that part. They had to have it. Because one of the things that God told Abraham to do was to circumcise all your male children after eight days. And if you came in and you didn't have nothing circumcised, then you have violated what God said you must do. So why did you put yourself in that position? 
Why, why did you put yourself in a position where you can't enter into the presence of God because you just basically told God, uh, I don't have anything to circumcise? God said, when, I, when they said as a boy, you had something. You had, you had, you had what, it, what was required. Now you can't come into my presence or my congregation. I'm not saying, right, at this time you can't. Let me say it like that. Because I know we live a long way from when this was written. And why is God saying this? Because some people felt like, I believe, that if I'm so sexual uh, stimulated until if this is going to separate me from being in the presence of, you know, God, get it. God said, you don't take all that. I'm able to keep you and your entire being, your body parts. I didn't tell you to do that. And then I heard some say that they were worshiping other idols and it was a part of their God type of worship that you cut that part off and then you just show up. God said, no, I want, he said, I, want, I don't want you to come because I want this so clear to the children of Israel that you don't even think about doing this. You're not going to have your cake and eat it too. Not now. Mm. So we are talking to people who did not have what we have today. But back here, 23rd, they had the word of God. They had God's word. He said, let it be clear. Let's just say this was a, 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 a United States law. What do you think that'll do to the ears of people? If they knew that they were prohibited from doing something that ought to be given to anybody, but you can't come because you did this. What, what do you think people will do? That's what they did then. God, they heard it, and guess what they did? They thought twice. Or they thought several times. If a man cut off his private part or his the stones of his anything that's belong to a man, and he said, you did that, you can't come in. That's what the first verse said. It's starting off just like that. But we're going to move on. Don't lose hope. And, 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 and let's look at the next verse. Chapter number two. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his 10th generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Now, I saw some people say that means even after 10 generations, he can't come. And then I saw some that said at 10. So all I can say, you can't come in to the presence of the Lord. Who? What two people can't come in? If a man has been castrated, anything going on in the male parts, you can't come. And he said, uh, a bastard can't come. So I'm letting you know, if you're going to be a part of my team, you got to have these two things. You got to have a mom and dad that's married, and you got to have everything that you needed to be circumcised. And what in the world is God saying to people? We need a savior. Because, you know, today, when they talk about how many people died for us to vote, and then we take it lightly when we can and don't. Think about what these folk did. They could not come into the presence of the word of God because they had been castrated. And everybody in town knew why you weren't coming. It wasn't a secret. God made it open. He made it your choice. I'm telling you. See, Moses is not saying that once you got in here. Because he know you straight now. But you're going to walk in there and see people walking around look like they are uh, above average thinking that this is how you really relate to some type of God. He said, you get in there and do like them folk. Because I already know you've been circumcised. Because I know what I know everybody in here. But once you cross this line, and you walk into that place where God has set aside, and it's given you, and you decide to copy these people, God says, stay away from my house. I'm telling you before you get in. So when you go in there, you won't think no, nobody just brought something up. Do you, any questions after what Moses said, any questions in the house? And all the men said, amen. <laughs> they said, I understand, we will do. 
And then he said, all right, we ain't got no bastards out here. You get over here and you start laying up with these folk and start having baby by these folk. The Bible said the baby can't come in here and neither you and your, all your, you can't come. Isn't that right? Isn't that, isn't that good? If you knew your, if you knew your outcome before you made your decision, doesn't that make sense? Doesn't that, don't that make you God? That you can trust me to know that I'm telling you what not to do and I'm going to keep my word if you decide to go in there and do that. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to watch you. And then I'm going to have somebody to say, tear that wall down, all that I'm saying. I will forgive. Only if you hear my son. So there's hope. I don't want to jump ahead because there's some more stuff got to come out of this. And I plan to read every word of it. Who can't come in here? Moses said, oh, stop. We're not in there yet. None of y'all men better not go in there and castrate yourself. Two, none of y'all better not sleep with anybody that's not a part of God. Invade your husband. Don't go in there and start sleeping with these folk. I'm telling you. Right before we get in. Ooh, I can't believe that God's word said, yes, he did. Because it makes sense. He was trying to let you know, if you do these things, don't come near me. And you know you want to be near me. And I keep my word, and you already know that. You want to? I ain't saying God said, but I can imagine. Do you want forty more years of what I had to get? No, let's just go in here and follow instruction, because you already know Moses saying, nah, "I'm not going in." But I'm telling y'all before y'all do, don't you try this. I exhibit next, Your Honor. I must present this case. An Ammonite, verse three, or Moabite shall not. Enter into the congregation of the Lord. Ammonites and Moabites shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation. Lord said that for a lot. No, you ain't, you're not coming. What is the Lord saying? What he said when he wrote it, we just not read. <laughs> We're so trained and 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 and, you know, what's that word? We've been on the witchcraft for so long until well, now God's saying something. It's shocking us. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm telling you, it was shocking to me too. But at the same time, I know who said it. God said it. And I know and believe that he absolutely loves man. But he's very clear. See, people get you like that. They get you to come in their house. And then they tell you after you in what you can and can't do. God said, I'm telling you what to do before you come in. If you are Ammonite, you can't come in because I told y'all them folks supposed to, they what y'all coming up in here for? Y'all supposed to been y'all supposed to get got rid of. But some of y'all didn't let them folk in, and God said, "All right, you let them in. You didn't kill them all. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. They can't come near me." An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord, because I told y'all them some hard headed people. And where they come from? It came from the book of Genesis. Go check it out. Go check out who these folk, how they got started. Oh, but. See, this lets you know what Jesus did on that cross. He spared us from this. But we need to know what were we spared from? Why is he to be worshipped? Because there was a law that God said certain people couldn't come near me. And he meant it. But once Jesus came in and he said to us, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you, you can. But let's just stay with what we didn't, we don't know and what God said. Because the promise that Moses said, there is going to be a prophet among you that's going to, you're going to see some things change. But let's just see what God said and initially to keep these people on the line because they knew. When God said it's time to, you know, we're going to feast on this day and feast on this day and they couldn't come. It wasn't God said. He said, I just told you before you came in here, this is how I run my house. So you you really honor somebody who's very clear, very clear, very right. Because every choice that you make in life is it, it, your choice. Just because there are consequences, it still was your choice. Why did you go have a baby out of wedlock and then think that now you got to Force that baby to be accepted when God already told you it's, it's, you can't bring that baby to him like that. 
And you can't come and the baby can't come either. So they made a lot, you know, in some countries, they're not the United States, so they they have a law. You cut in some countries, you still ain't that you ain't got a hand. They ain't gotta lock you up. They just cut your hand off. What do they what do you think? Do you think there's a lot of thieves in that country? I don't think so. It's pretty much like you don't pay your house, no, you get evicted. They're about to close the thing I can think of after they do much, but we'll 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 just like hold on, just wait, we're gonna try, try, try. After a while, you got to go. Something we can't change. It's just the way it is. And this is what God is saying. I'm starting off strong. This entire book is strong. Very clear. And you can write all the letters to people and say, why is God like that? Because he's not like that. He's trying to give you the choice not to make choices like that. It's not God's wrestle. That's not what he want on, on his table. So if you know that's what, what he doesn't want, why would you go out there and do it and then blame him for having the results of what he said you're not going to have? You ain't going to have it both ways. It's just the way it is. He, got, he said, I got the guidelines. All right, let's go to verse. So the Ammonites can't come to Moabites. These were the guys, and God going to explain to you who they are. Why can't the Ammonites and the Moabites come in? Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt. You were on your way from Egypt, and you, you needed some water, and you needed something to eat, and they wouldn't give you anything. And they've just been showing out ever since, for, oh, since Noah. Said a lot, not knowing lot. Let me see, was it Noah a lot? When did Lot come? Lot came after Noah, right here. Mm -hmm. That's when Sodom and Gomorrah got in trouble. So these folk left there, if I'm not mistaken. And Lot's daughters got him in a place where he didn't know what he was doing and they slept with him because they said, We got to do something because we ain't got no men. We gotta get we gotta get the world, keep going. And they did something that God did test. You slept with your dad, and now you got a generation of people that's now God is saying, and they don't act right. They can act right, but they don't. And when you they saw you coming, they shut the door. How in the world can you shut the door on somebody who got you got what they can have and, and got an extra and you wouldn't give it to them? And these folk were like that. They saw you coming, all of y'all, and all they had to do is just let you have, just walk through that path and they refused to do it and now you let these folk in him god said they can't come in we're gonna keep reading that's why it's good to just keep reading the word because you start making an opinion here then you you shut this book but it oh you're gonna shut it on something good let's keep going don't you want somebody who you if a man a woman tell you they come in and you say can i borrow a hundred dollars from you don't you want them to pay you back because you gave them your word that you, they said out. You you said you can have a hundred dollars long we pay them back. Then they don't pay you back. How you feel? Okay, let's see what God said according to these folk. You needed bread. You were hungry and they wouldn't feed you. And because they hired somebody to curse you, Balaam, the son of Beor of, Peth of Pethor of Mesopotamia, Tamia, to curse you. Here it is. You, you just walking down the street doing your thing. And these guys not only would give you anything to eat, but then they sit and said, we're going to have somebody to, to make everything that you touch go bad. And God said, nope. Because first of all, I told you to get rid of them. Now they're in here and they can't come near me. So I'm letting you know. Nevertheless, the Lord your God did not allow what Balaam tried to curse on you with his mouth, being known as a person that was a witch doctor or some type of wrong spirited led person trying to curse God's people. You're wasting your time. But the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing. And guess who got what they put out? Balaam. He got what he tried to curse. He lost his life. So all up in God's face, talking about, can I do this and can you do this? And we offered all this, and God said, Yeah, I already know your motive. But, but the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing unto you because the Lord absolutely loves you. I wouldn't let nobody harm you. You don't even know what was going on behind your back. 
But I'm telling y'all, these three things. Don't you go in there and be fooled by those gods. I don't play. Don't you go in there laying up with them folk and having babies. I don't play. Don't you let them folk that cause all this confusion come near my presence. They will not. Because you know what I'll do. I'm just telling you. Oh, but now how can you read that? Because I'm reading the history. Thou shalt, okay, the sixth verse. <coughs> Thou shalt not seek their peace, nor their prosperity all the days forever. Don't go behind them folk trying to see how they how they get what they got. Mm -mm. You know what? That was the Moabites. Yeah. Okay, now. Uh, uh, now we're going to verse 7. You shall not hate an Edomite. Those are Esau's. Those are that's your, your close relatives. For he is your brother. You shall not hate the Egyptian. Can't hate the Egyptians. What all they did to us? Mm -mm, can't hate them. Because why? You used to be a stranger too. In his land. I brought you out of a place. And when you got ready to go, they gave you everything you need to get on your journey. So we're going to thank these folk right now. You see an Egyptian say thank you. Because you're the one that helped sustain me until I got to where I can be a blessing to you. You remember that stuff you borrowed from me? Let me pay you back. You know, you gave us when God told us we couldn't let that bread rise. We had to get out of there quick. You know, and all y'all firstborn sons would die. And I think it was firstborn sons. I don't know if it was the daughters. I had to go back and check. He said, now you've been here as an Egyptian. I know what it's like to be a slave. And we can't do nothing to hate you. We can't be finna bring that up. God brought us out of you. We're thankful that we were brought out. Now we know the meaning of who the strength of God. And I can't bother Esau. Uh, that's my daddy's twin brother. Can't bother him because God ain't through with him yet. He's going to deal with him a little bit longer. And I can't bother Egyptians because you are the one that gave us what we need when we needed what we got. And all the people that tried to kill us, they, they, they ain't no, no way around. So God said, I'm telling you what you can touch and what you can. And I'm going to tell you why. All right. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord and their third, in their third generation. He said, the Egyptians, the children that are begotten of them, if you got, if you have a child of an Egyptian, uh, the children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. Now, let me connect the seventh and eighth verse. Thou shalt not hate an Edomite, for he is your brother, and you shall not abhor an Egyptian because you used to be a stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. At some point, they can come in my presence. Excuse me for a minute. I have a guest that entered my place of video, and how can I help you? Okay, all right. You, you going all right, you stand here. Peppermint. Okay, get one thing, go back in there. You on your break? No, I have to go to music class. Okay, well, close the door. Sorry, y'all. Close, come back and close the door, Punky. I'm coming. All right, I'm sorry. All right, the children, I right, said, if I'm assuming that God is saying right here, the Edomites, if you got a, uh, a child. Well, let's just say that the children that are begotten of them, those two people that I said, don't you hate them? They can come in me at some point. All right, then he goes to the night verse. When the host goes forth against your enemies, then keep you from every wicked thing. He said, when we go in there and, and we have to beat, um, I was going to say beat down, but when you go in there and you uh, uh, get rid of what I said, he said, don't bring the earrings out of them folks. Them, oh, they used to wear this. I like these. I don't want that. He said, don't you bring nothing that reminds me of how wicked those people were. He said, what? Don't bring me nothing from the wicked people. A word. Oh, but I like it. Yeah, but God said, reminds me of how many babies they kill. I don't want that. I don't want anybody to think I make a living off of stuff that I said get rid of. 
the word. Verse 10. If there be among you any man. Uh oh, y'all. Getting ready to get wrong. I know some people skip this. I'm not. I'm not. I can't. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness that chances him by night, then shall he go abroad out of the camp. He shall not come within the camp. Uh oh, you can't have wet dreams. Ha! <laughs> That's what the word said, verse 10. You can't be thinking about this and then you let your body release as what you were thinking. And you brought, you come before me and say, I want to worship the Lord. The Lord said, no, you're not. Go away. Stay away for a period of time. But he shall be, when he in the evening comes, he shall wash himself with water. And when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. He said, now go on out there. You can stay away. And guess what? Everybody knew why you were out there. <laughs> because God has said, I want it clear. I don't, I don't do this behind the door. You know, just, just, just between me and the doctor. You got to sign this oath that you ain't going to tell my business. God said, no, your business is out there. You were thinking about the wrong thing last night and your body responded to your thoughts and then you thought that you're going to get over there. He said, I'm going into your into, I'm going into your bedroom where nobody in there but you and your mind. And you thought about something that put yourself in a position now you can't even come before me. Who can't come? A man that has castrated himself. Uh, a child, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his 10th generation, shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord? Not only him, but what he pass on and on and on. They can't come. Uh, Ammonite and the Moabite can't come up in here. And uh, because of how they act foolishly towards you. And uh, uh, don't be mean to your brother, the Edomites. That's uh, Esau's folk. And be nice to the Egyptians. Let them do that. But now we're all the way down here to where he said, and then if you go to war, don't you take nothing that the enemy had. Call you say, I'm just going to say this as a souvenir. He said, no, I don't do that. And then he said, if you have a dream last night, if you're a man and you came, got up in the next morning, you saw what you were thinking about. He said, you go away from me. And then you stay out away from me. And then at the end of the day, you go take a bath and then you come back. Because I'm going to let everybody know I'm going to play that. Very clear. So what does that put you in control? It give you the power to choose. You gonna choose me, or you gonna choose what you want? Because if you you gonna choose me, you gotta come right. If not, I either you ain't gonna see me, or you gonna see me later. But right now, I'm letting you know how I'm gonna run things when you cross this this county line. This is what's gonna happen. So all y'all been doing that. Once you get over into this promised land, it's certain things you can't do. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you come in me. You can't bring none of that stuff that you used to do. You must start over. You got to, in fact, you got to be born again. You got to start all the way back over and do go through the process. Eh, 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 eh. You got to go through all that. And I got to train you from birth. And I'm going to feed you manna from health. And I'm going to tell you how it's got to be in my house. You are still a separated people. There are certain things that cannot be done in my house. And that's what we got to learn. What are we thanking Jesus for dying for these things right here. Because there used to be certain things that would disconnect you from God for a long time. Then Jesus said, let me go pay this price so I can teach y'all how to, how to behave yourself in the presence of my father being called by his name. He said, now if you ignore me after I went all that, what these people went through. You, you let's keep reading. So you can't be thinking about stuff you ain't got no bill in that magazine and putting yourself in an unclean position as a man and then waking up talking about you ready to go see what the Lord wants you to do. He said, I want you to back off. This, what the, this is the Old Testament. You remember, like I said, you know what the black people went through when, when they couldn't vote. You, need, you see what these people went through? You say, I just want a better life for my children. Why? Because I remember my past. Okay, let's go back all the way back and see. And I, 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 I really do believe they didn't have a problem with these things. You don't want to be in, you don't want you don't want to be in that lady class right there because 
she 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 just too straight up and I don't like it like that. That kid said that to me. Why? Because I make you responsible for your choices. That you can't come in my classroom, take a seat, and I, they hired me to teach you. And you come in here unprepared every day. And I'm, no, I'm going to ask you to go sit in somebody else's classroom and waste that time over in that room. Because in this room right here, we're going to work. Because I'll be trying to keep my eyes on you for doing something you have no business. Because I'm not getting ready to entertain you. I'm a teacher. So I'm real clear. And at the end of the day, I want you to be the best. And this is just how we're going to get there. All right, let's see the next verse. We covered that. 11, but it shall be when evening comes. Okay, we said we, he, he had to wash himself and then he can come back again. All right, verse 12. Oh, God is so back in the day. He the same today. He still on anything, everything in here you don't even want. You don't, you, you don't want that. You don't want nobody walking up on you, having slept last night and releasing body fluids all over them, then coming in and telling me, how can I help you? No! Go away! I'm not doing you. All right. Verse 12. Thou shalt have a place also outside the camp where you go forth abroad. He said, when you got a long way to go, when you get over here, you got to go. You got to go a long way. And you shall have a paddle upon your weapon. Uh-oh. Get ready to get... Uh -oh. Hold your ears now. And it shall be when you will ease yourself abroad. You got to go to the bathroom. Uh-oh. God talking about that? Yes, he did. Woo. <laughs> you got to go and feces. You got to... And it shall come to pass when you had to ease yourself abroad. You shall dig therewith and shall turn back and cover that which come from you. He said, once you get ready to deposit in your waist, you got to dig a hole in the ground and bury your waist and then cover your waist up. Did God's word say that? Yes, that is. Deuteronomy 23, verse 13. <laughs> he said, you got to go to the bathroom and you wait. Ain't no bathroom around. You can't just leave it on the ground and then walk away. But he said, no, 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 no. You got to clean up behind yourself. Skip that part. Nope. Not going to do it. Why? Why does God want you to clean up? Look at what God said. For the Lord, your God walks. He said, I, I walk. For the Lord, your God walks in the midst of the camp to deliver you. Trying to see how you're doing. And to give up your enemy before you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put your enemies out. And I'm walking on, on stuff that I don't want on the bottom of my shoe. Therefore, shall the camp be holy. You got to keep it clean. Holy means you cannot defecate on the ground, leave it there, and I walk through it, get it on the He said, I'm holy. And to give up your enemy before you, therefore, shall the camp be holy. He said, you cannot defecate in the, on the ground while you talk. I got a long way to go. And here I come trying to help you out. And I got to walk on what you just left on the ground. He said, no, clean up behind yourself. That he sees no unclean thing in you. And, and he's because if I see it, I'm going to turn away from you. I leave you fighting by yourself. Did the Bible say that that is Deuteronomy 23, 14? God said, I like it clean. That's why we don't have time to sit around at the house and we don't have nothing to do. I think sometime, I think it was just giving us time to go home and clean up. That's why I, I, that's what I think. I got all this cleaning stuff that I ordered. That stuff not just for be looking on my shelf and say, oh, look at all this cleaning stuff. I got all this Lysol I got. Oh, look at all this stuff I got. I want to show y'all some stuff I got. Let's show it to you. And yeah, this is just, oh, all this cleaning stuff. You walking around with all that cleaning stuff in your house dirty. God has said, girl, I ain't impressed by that basket. You don't use that stuff. Your house ain't clean. God said, I'm telling you, I'm holy. I'm holy. Both, I'm holy. That means that I like things nice and neat. If you want me. What the word said? For the Lord your God walks in the midst of the camp to deliver you and to give up thine enemies before you. Therefore shall the camp be holy, clean, that he see no unclean thing in you. 
and turn away from you. He said, I walk up in that house and it's nasty, I'm out. Did he talk about how I was spirit? <laughs> That God didn't want, he don't care nothing about the outside. We can do anything with our bodies, but as long as he get the inside. No, he said, this man, he said, if you defecate, dig a hole, keep a spade beside you, dig a hole, put your stuff in there, keep it clean, because I'm walking. And then dig it deep. Don't dig it, don't dig it. You know. I love it. Verse 15. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from the master unto thee. If a man ran from a as a slave, this is the word of God. He said, you shall not send him back. If a man ran from a slave, but men don't run from good people. Teachers don't move out of schools of good principles. They don't. They'll stick with a good principle for a long time. He said, if, if a slave escapes and come to you, he said, do not send him back. He shall live with you. That's what God telling the children, children of Israel. If a man that is in slavery comes to you and he runs to you, don't send him back. Tell me, you belong to, to, to Mr. So-and-so. He said, no, he doesn't. He said, you, he shall dwell with you even among you in that place which he's shall choose. Where does slave want to live? And y'all said this was written by somebody who wanted to control the mind of blood. He shall dwell in you, even among you in that place which he shall choose in one of your gates where he likes him best. Thou shalt not oppress him. He said if a man is running away from as a slave and he finds you, he said let that man choose wherever he want to live. If you a slave, God said, according to verse 16, and you get away from that mean master, and you come into and find the people of God, he said, don't you send that man back? And let him choose. He said, he can choose. Let me see, I want to stay with Brenda. <laughs> God said, according to verse 16, do not send a man running away from slavery back to his slave on. You keep him in there, let him choose. He said, let him pick where he want to stay, and don't you oppress him. Have we read this? I have not read this. Why we sit up there and fight over stuff that God said I settled in heaven a long time ago and we've been trying to figure out what to do with the slave. You got to send him back to his master. He said, no, you don't. Because the same word that you said, put me in bunch. He, okay, just in case you ain't read it, here my, hear my freedom paper right here. And I choose to live in your big house. I like your house. <laughs> I love this word God. God don't play. We don't read. That's what it is. All right, let's go ahead and get this scoop of this out of the treasure of. That was a treasure. So anybody want to know what did God think about slavery, go to Deuteronomy 23, verses 15 and 16. But you got to eat all the rest of them too now. I'm just saying. We, we fighting over something that's been settled. All right, not, not, not an Old Testament sound good, don't it? <laughs> All of us sound good because it gives you the right to make a decision. Because he said, I'm going to keep my word. You have not gone into that promised land yet. But when you when I get there, these are the things. All the stuff that I'm saying, all these 16 things that uh, Moses is saying, I'm just letting you know you in charge. God don't play. But if that we are, so that's good right there. All right, now that's 16, 15, 16. 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite in the son of Israel. There will be no homosexuality and no woman out there sleeping with men making money. Not going to happen. That's the same one that said you can't keep a slave. Now you can't wait a minute, hold up. I can, I can deal with the other one, but I can't deal with it. Ah, oh, yeah, that's what he said. Clear. He said, you, 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 you can't. Not in my house. That's his word. You shall not bring the high of a whore. Don't bring me no money that you made them. I just want to pay my offering. <laughs> he said, no, you're not either. Thou shalt not either. Don't you take the money of a whore or the price of a dog. A man that's sleeping with anything. Don't you bring me that. 
into the house of the Lord your God for any vow. For even both these are abominations to the Lord your God. He said, do not take your body. Go do what you want with it. Tell me, I made some money and I just want to pay my tithe. <laughs> God said, it ain't going to happen. This, I told you this book has not been read. Not to me, it ain't. Y'all said, if y'all said it's been read, why y'all ain't never tell me this? Have reading that word. I only thing about Deuteronomy when I think about it, he told a woman he can't wear pants. He said, he said a, a woman don't put on things that belong to a man. A man don't you put on, they ain't said that other part. A man don't you put on that thing that belong to a woman. But we left that part out there just ready to beat the women down with the words and don't you put on nothing that a woman's supposed to have. Well, we ain't say both of them, but anyway, we're moving on down to the next one. Because when God gets through talking, he said, I'm done talking. When I get to talking to Moses, we, we get ready to walk this out. This is how I'm going to run the earth. Just like when you go in your classroom and you give your kids the, 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 the do's and don'ts of your classroom. You ain't going to talk about that all day. You're going to execute to make sure they maintain what you just said. That's what God is saying. I'm trying to give you everything that I'm going to watch. Just saying. But we don't even know what he said. Because we so free to say we could just get forgiveness for all this stuff, but Let's just keep reading. And we can. If you, if you, 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 you write on that. But let's keep reading. Let's see what else they used to do. <laughs> Thou shalt not bring the high of a whore. Don't bring me no tithes off and you've been sleeping with somebody. I just got to pay my tithes. I want the Lord to bless me. <laughs> All right, 19 verse. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to your brother. He said, you your brother borrowed $5. He only owe you $5 back. You talking about, can you had to pay me some interest. He said, no, you don't. You tell them folks, you get up in here, don't you start it. Your brother need $5, you give it to him. However, thou shalt not lend upon usury to your brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. In other words, Whatever you borrowed, you pay back that, and that, that's all you do. Don't make it hard for that man. He wouldn't have borrowed from you if he wasn't having a hard time. Now you're trying to make it extra for him. Whatever you let him have, that's all you have a right to receive back. But, however, God said, let me give you a break. A stranger you may lend upon you, so you can make a little money off of him. But unto your brother, y'all, you should not lend upon usury. That the Lord thy God may do what? Bless you in all that you do, you set your hands on. In the land, whether thou goest to possess it. Now, I'm telling you, this is, I'm, I'm reading y'all what God told me. How he tell you that? In the book, he talking to me. I'm just talking and telling y'all what, what I'm learning. And I ain't got no problem with it. I'm just letting y'all know this what me and God talking about. He said, Brendan, don't you do this. Don't you do this. I said, okay, Lord. When you shall make a vow, Brenda, unto the Lord, me, God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. That's why I said, forgive me of my sins. When you shall make a vow unto the Lord, your God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of you, and it would be sin if you don't. Do I have anything to boast about? I do not. I need a Savior. That was his word. But if you shall forbear, keep your mouth to vow, and you don't do it, it shall be no sin unto you. If you thought about it, but you ain't speaking. He said, you good. He said, but that which is gone out of your lips, that what you shall keep and perform. What does that tell me to do? Shut up. Slow down talking. Think about what you're getting ready to say. Because God get irritated. To, and we'll learn that later. That when you just say things, don't never do it. It's just like somebody calling you and say, I'm going to be there at 10. And every time they look up, they come. I had a guy that working in my house like that. He'll tell me he's going to be there and I'll get everything prepared. And he well, I'm running late. Okay, I understand that. But then the next day, in the next day, we just like God. Made you like his image. In his image. We can't stand it either. Everything that God can't stand, we can't stand it either. God is straight up with him. We call somebody on the phone, girl. Let me tell you what they did. We try to keep the see. Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't tell you what happened. I can't tell you what happened, God. God don't do that. He said, I wrote what I said. My word is settled. 
24th verse. When you come into your neighbor's vineyard, you come into, you go to Golden Corral. When you go to Golden Corral, you may eat and get full. But don't you put nothing in your purse. <laughs> that isn't the word. When you come into Golden Corral, I mean, okay, it said this. When you go into your neighbor's vineyard, then you may eat grapes that fill at thine own pleasure, but you shall not put any in your vessel. Girl, I got me, I got me a Ziploc bag. I'm putting this stuff in God. I said, you are a thief. Now, all that what God says, some of that stuff I agree with and some I don't. Okay, this ain't your house. This is the bottom line. I'm so glad that, I, you know what? I'm glad on me. Because I ain't got to be, I, it is what it is. If you go out there and live with a person, have a baby by a man, ain't nobody finna feel sorry. Well, Brenda, ain't nobody finna feel sorry for you. You made that decision. You know what happened to them other kids that did that. Why you thought you was above the law? Why you would thought? Why you thought you could go out there and sleep with a baby and have that baby go to school and into my Miss Miss Brenda? We, we, we who, who you want us to send the paperwork to to you or his daddy? Because he don't know. He said he don't know where to send the. Work. We got to have certain paperwork. And why you confuse the whole? Classroom like that. Everybody child don't do that. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. It's clear. Child come in, act right, looking right. Now this child living like, I know. It is deep. God's word is right. Last verse. He said, don't you go to Golden Corral and put that thing. Well, I ain't know that. I just, because I, I don't think, see, I, I can't eat all this stuff at Golden Corral. I had to put some in my purse because I, it, it, I can't eat that much at one time. Then don't go there. Because God said, when I check my balance at the end of the day, how many cookies did you put in your purse when you left Golden Corral? And then go out bragging how many you stole. You ain't say you stole it. You did my girl, I got me some of them good cookies. The word says in Deuteronomy 23 and verse 24, talking to Miss Brenda, because if you can't handle it, I'm sure going to eat it. He says, don't you put none of this stuff in your pocket, in your vessel. Then the last verse. When you come into standing corn in your neighbors, uh, he said, when you come into the standing corn of your neighbor, then you may pluck some, some taste a little of this corn. Bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is some good old corn. <laughs> Easy with your hand. You can taste it. But you shall not move a sickle. You better not go get this that 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 chainsaw or whatever the knife. And said, This stuff's so good, I'm gonna give me more. He said, No, you're not either. He said, You shall not move a sickle until your neighbor standing corn. He said, You stood there and while y'all were talking, he was tasting it. No, no. You was on your way selling well and you saw some corn, you saw some grapes on my, you saw some oranges on my tree and you got one off. I ought to be saying, yeah, help yourself. It didn't mean for you to come back with a basket and start pulling off my tree. Now you're in violation. Now you're a thief. Oh, I'm just saying what the word said. That's why we got to read this book in its entirety. I know what I'm going to do. I ain't losing my life over something that I could have read and now my mind can think. And it's making me a better person. And I can tell people, well, you talking about that, I'm under the blood. What, what, by what right? These laws are still in effect. They are still in effect. Everything that God said here is still in effect if we have not been born again. The penalty on these laws are still just as, just as real as you break them. But when we come to God, when we come to Jesus and we say, Lord, be Lord of my life. Now, what's, what, what is this all this about? God is saying, I hate sin so much until I would tell you, don't come, with, don't come toward me like that. But I'm going to give you a chance to get to know me. And I'm going to go real slow, slow because I'm going to do after school remediation. Old Testament is the school. This is for your learning. But when I send my son, and he said, Daddy, I'll do and help these kids after school because they didn't get it. He said, but if you don't attend that tutoring session with my son, and he's going to go real slow, 
Then he's going to give you a reminder, which is the Holy Spirit, to tell you to not do none of these things. He said, but if we don't operate under his tutelage, you're going to pay for every sin all the way back to the beginning of time. You can get forgiveness with, with, with Jesus. You can do it over. You can turn it in late. And he said, I still accept it. And then you still won't come in on that note. You got a problem. He said, you can, you can do, you can, why would you want to live a life and get the consequences of a life that you keep flunking the test? When all you got to do is stay up at night and study and do like everybody else that's passing it. Jesus said, I'm here to help you, but let me, let make this clear. There is a book that is already put in motion that if you don't listen and do what I say, do, do being your after school teacher and you still want to bring in those ways because I am able to give you milk and then I'm going to feed you bread and then I'm going to feed you, well, I'm going to feed you milk and bread because my word is bread. Then I'm going to get you to where you can chew on some meat and you're going to meet up with everything God said. Why? Because I'm going to teach you how to treat people in this one message. Treat me. And it'll cover all this other stuff that you couldn't do the way you want me to treat you. And that settles all of this right here. You want somebody else to be on time? You be on time. You don't want me sleeping with, you don't want me sleep with your husband, then don't you sleep with mine. Jesus, that's all I'm saying. I'm telling you all of this because I know the cost of what these people had to go through. I'm trying to tell you that you got to do exactly what they did. I'm just telling you in a, in a, in a different form. And then I'm going to help you and keep you from falling. But if you don't come to class, you got to pay for everything that them folks said they had to go through. And they broke them laws. And Jesus said, but I'm, I got to give you, I got to, I got to, I don't want you to go. He said, if you only knew the love that the, he said, I can, he, he said, you only knew how much my father loves us. I only speak what I heard my father speak. When God gets through speaking to Moses, there is not another word that God is going to say to man other than, did you do what I told you to do when I told those laws in Moses? And that's why we need to know these things because we don't know what God like and dislike. We don't know what Jesus died for. We don't know none of this stuff. We just know that we're free to do whatever we want to do. God said, no, you're not. You're not free. In fact, you're in the worst shape. Jesus told them, folks, if Sodom and Gomorrah had heard me, they would have repented. Y'all in a lot of trouble. I'm giving you the word. You got the Old Testament. I'm giving you my blood and I died. And then I'm going to send you with the Holy Spirit and you still won't stop. Bernie, you better stop, God. I'm talking to myself as I talk to you because I'm not escaped from this because I'm reading it. I don't know what the 24th chapter going to say. I have no idea. But guess what? I'm ready to read it. So all I'm saying is, if when you Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, know what you're signing up for. Because the day that you vowed to me that you were going to be my student or you're going to follow me and let me be your Lord, he said, I'm going to keep my end of the bargain. But I'm telling you, please come to class. Get to know who I am. Because I declare when I can get back and I look at you and you ain't been to class, I'm going to say, I don't know you. You're going to say, oh, I, I, I was a milk. He said, he said, shut that door and lock it. But Lord, I had to go get my all. He said, too late. I was married to you. And you never came in and became my bride like you promised. So I'm just trying to tell you, I'm going to wake up somebody in this earth and they're going to read you what I said so that you can walk away. You can walk away and say, that's Old Testament, I'm under the blood. He said, I ain't never seen you. Never seen you in the blood. You butcher my word and you say things and you tell people not to get to know what the father said. Because I said every word that came out of my dad's mouth. He stopped. He didn't talk much. He gave it to Moses and he didn't say nothing else. He said, after that, all he did was see. And then he said, I'm going to raise up a prophet. And then Moabite. And that girl came in and told, who was that, um, the one that he said, can't come to me. But when that girl said, um, uh, 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 her, her husband had died, uh, uh, Ruth, when she told her mother-in-law, she was a Moabite. And when she told her mama-in-law, she said, I'll go with, let your God be my God. God said, that's what I'm talking about right there. 
and she was able to enter into the word of God. And then she gave forth. And then we got the king. I listened to this guy this morning better than me. Well, he he's who he is. But he was saying how that girl said, Lord, your God. And then she was married to Boaz. And, and they gave a son. And then after we get David and that next, next, next thing, we know we got the prophet himself, Jesus. We got to know this book is easy. We just got to read it. Thank you for joining me if you're there. But if not, now it'll be here for you later. Talk to you later. Love you. Bye.